number one asks us which expression equals two to the seventh power. So we know that exponents mean that we have repeated multiplication. So this is this number is how many times the base is a factor. And factor means multiplication. And the base is this bottom number two. So that means that we're going to have that base multiplied seven times. That's B. Number two, evaluate the expression three times five to the X when X equals two. So we plug in two for the X. And then we know that exponents comes first in order of operations, well really parentheses, and then exponents. Then we have multiplication and division in the order that they appear, and then addition and subtraction in the order that they appear. So the first thing we're gonna do is deal with the exponent. So you've got a couple of ways you could do this. You could actually write it out as five times five. You could also, so that's one way, you could also actually evaluate five times five and put it as 25 or five squared. So then three times five gives you 75. Or over here, then we could um, multiply. And really multiplication is commutative, so it doesn't matter what order we multiply these in. Um, but let's just look at it so that if we did three times five, we'd get 15. And then times five again would give us 75. So either way um, you cut it, you're going to get 25 or 75, sorry. Number three, the graph shows the yearly balance in dollars of an investment account. What is the initial balance of the account? And so the initial val balance is at time of zero. And then we can see that we're here at $1,000. Is the account growing by the same number of dollars each year? And how do you know? So if it's growing by the same number, it's going to have a constant rate, meaning that it's going to be a straight line if we were to connect them. So a linear line. And we can see that this one is not linear. It's getting steeper as we go. So then this is going to be no. And we know because um, the slope between the points isn't constant, meaning not the same or not a straight line. You could also look at the difference between a couple of points. Um, so if we looked like from year zero to I don't know, three, it went up 500. So zero to three, this is 500 growth. So if we looked at another three year chunk, um, so if we looked at seven over to 10, we can see that's significantly more than a 500. So that's like over a thousand, maybe that's like 1200 growth. So those two differences aren't the same. That's another way you could explain it. Um, C says a second investment account um, starts with $2,000 and grows $150 per year. Then it says sketch the values on the graph. So let's sketch those values. So it's starting at 200. Okay, so I'm just going to create a little table over here. So it's starting at, uh, sorry, 2000. And then it's growing by 150 each year. And I'm just going to plot the even numbers. So 150 per year would mean that it's going to be 300 per two years, right? So then after two years, it's going to be at 2,300. So I'll plot that just below 2,500. At four, it would be at 2,600. So just above 2,500. At six, it'd be at 2,900. At eight, it'd be at 3,200. At nine, it would be at 3,500. 
or sorry, at 10. So at 10, it's at 3,500 and so on. So then this would, you know, keep going at 12. It would be at 3,800. Oops, that's too high. Um, where am I at here? 10 was 3,500. Okay, and then 38. And then 42. But so something like that. And so then it says, how does the growth of the balances of the two accounts compare? So if you can see this, um, and this we don't connect this with a line because it's just each year, but you can see that these um, points are linear. So these are staying the same growth where these ones we saw over time that this line got steeper, meaning that it's growing faster over time. Okay, so if we're comparing these, um, both are growing, right? So let me type this out. So both accounts are growing over time, but the second account is growing at a steady pace where the first account is um growing more quickly as time goes on. So it starts at, at a slower pace and then as time goes on, it gets, it grows more and more. Number four, Jada writes the expression five times three X as 15 X. Do you agree with Jada that these are equivalent or no? So she has five times three to the X equals 15 times X. So what she did here is multiplied these two numbers together, right? So she multiplied the five and the three together. And not only that, but she also brought the exponent down to just be multiplied by the number. Okay, so this is not going to be a true statement, and you can explain this in different ways, but if we just looked at um, maybe plugging in a value for x, so let's just plug in, if we looked at x equals um, 2, if we plug this in over here, this would be 5 times 3 squared, which means that we have 5 times three times three, you could write it as, or you could write it as five times nine, and we end up with 45, okay? So we know that this equation or this expression is equivalent to 45 when x equals two, where if we do that here, we get 15 times two. And when we do 15 times two, that's 30. So then we can see here that those are not equivalent. Number five, investment account one starts with a balance of $200 and doubles every year. Investment account two starts with $1,000 and increases by 100 each year. How long does it take for each account to double? So this first one says it doubles every single year. So for account one, it's just going to take one year. For account two, it's increasing by $100 each year. So this means that we need to figure out when it's go, going to go from 1000 to 2000 which means that it's going to add $1,000. And every it's $100 every year. So if we divide this by 100, that's going to be 10 years. So for account two, it's going to take 10 years for this one to double or 10 years for it to add an additional $1,000. Part B says, how long will it take each account to double again? So remember for account one, this is doubling every year. So it's just going to double in one more year. Where account two now has $2,000 in it, 
Okay, so now we're at 2,000. So now we have to figure out when this account is going to add another $2,000, right? To double it, have to add itself in again. So then we're going to have to divide that 2,000 by 100 to figure out that that's 20 more years. So we'd have to do 20 more years before that one would double. So how does the growth in these two count in these two accounts compare? So um, account one is growing much more quickly than account two. And you can see that because it, it only took it, you know, one year to double and then another year to double again. And so this one, the growth is much quicker. It is doubling much faster than account two. And then account two, it's taking, you know, 10 years to double the first time, 20 years to double the second time. Number six, a study of 100 recent high school graduate graduates investigates the link between childhood reading habits and achievement in high school. Participants are asked if they read books every night with another person um, when they were ages two to five. So did they read books with another person between two and five? And then what's their grade average in high school classes? And here's the results. So what does the um, 21 represent? And so the 21 represents, and we just look at the two col the column and the row that it's in. So this represents, um, 21 represents the number of students who read books nightly with another person from ages two to five who have a B average. Okay, so we have the B average and um, they are the ones who read. Okay, so those are the two um, spots that they're in in the table, the B average and the red nightly. Okay, and then um, what does the 10 represent in the table? So then the 10 here. Okay, is going to be A average and did not read nightly. So if I just move this down and then I'm going to change out some words here. So the 10, whoops, the 10 represents the number of students who did not read books nightly with another person from two to two to five and have, have um, an A average. So they have an A average and they did not read nightly with another person from ages two to five. Number seven, Lynn makes a snack machine or thinks a snack machine is like a function because um, it's because it's outputs for an item for each code input. So it has outputs for each code. Um, explain why she is correct. And so um, kind of basically what she said, right? There's one code that goes to one unique snack. So each code gives you a unique snack. You're not typing in the same code and it's giving you, it's picking between snacks. Okay, you type in the code, it gives you the snack you asked for. Number eight, at a gas station, a gallon of gasoline costs $3.50. The relationship between the dollar of gasoline or the cost of gasoline and the gallons purchase can be described with a function. Um, identify the input variable. So what are you changing? So what are you picking when you go to the gas station? And that's the number of gallons of gas that you put in your car. And then the output is going to be your cost. So then when we describe the function in sentence form, okay, the output goes here and then the input goes here. So as we use this sentence, we would say um, the cost 
of our gasoline, the total cost really, right? So the total cost of our gasoline is a function of the number of gallons that we would put in our car. So identify an input output pair here and explain its meaning. Okay, so if I put in two gallons of gasoline in my car, it's gonna cost me $7, two times 350. You know, you could have others, right? So you could do 10 gallons. Um, and if we do 10 times 350, that's 35. So this two seven would be two gallons of gas costs $7. Or this one, 10 gallons of gas costs $35.